All right, first up, let's talk about the United States, the American economy, and what we can expect as uh, far as a decision goes by the FOMC. That meeting is going to conclude, and the Fed is going to take a call on those interest rates. Of course, the American retail inflation came in at 3.1% for the month of November, like we reported. It is slightly lower than the 3.2% that was reported in the previous month in October. The core U.S. inflation, which of course does not include food and energy prices, that came in at 4%. All eyes now on the outcome of the FOMC meet uh, slated for today. A majority expecting the Fed to hold rates at current levels. And this would be for the third time around if at all they go ahead with uh, a pause on interest rates. And expectations are that they may even tone down the hawkishness. Investors are waiting to see the final outcome of that FOMC meet. It's expected to come out later tonight. But let's uh, get a sense of uh, what is at play right now when it comes to American interest rates. And for that, Santosh Rao, head of research and partner at Manhattan Venture Partners, is joining us from the U.S., along with Raid al Khadar, the chief market analyst at Equity Group, who joins us from the United Arab Emirates. First to you, Santosh Rao. The FOMC, uh, they've indicated that tighter financial conditions the incomplete trans transmission limit, uh, it limits the need for further tightening right now. But though these cuts are a long way off, the Fed chair has sounded pretty hawkish, though uh, that there would be more rate hikes and those cannot be ruled out, he says. What is your sense now about the factors that will be at play in making that decision this time? Uh, thanks for having me. Uh, <clears throat> well, I think the data has been very good. Uh, we saw PPI uh, today as well, and that's also very favorable. It's all, everything's inching down. So I think the conditions are restricted enough uh, just going by the data. But I think he's more worried about the services inflation that's still sticky. Uh, plus we have the CPI, the core inflation of CPI is uh, at 4%. I think that the goalpost is around 2%. So I think he's pretty much said it up front that he's not going to rest till he sees clear signs of a path to 2%. It's not going to happen overnight, but he wants a clear sign. He still thinks there are some stumbling blocks. He needs to be, uh, he doesn't want the market to get ahead of itself. So he's going to hold the fort, like you've said already. Uh, there's no, no chance of raising it, uh, but he's definitely not going to say that he's going to start cutting. I expect I'm in the camp, uh, also in the Goldman scam, Goldman Sachs scam, uh, and a few other economists that believe that maybe one, or two uh, cuts towards the end of the year. Uh, I think that would be the ideal scenario. That's where I'm leaning. Anything more than that would mean that there's things are really bad and he's doing it for reasons that are not really constructive. So we don't want that. I think at this pace, we can continue and that's what he's gonna stay. It's restrictive enough. Let's stay the, just hold the fort, hire for longer and uh, look at cuts maybe around uh, 3Q or 4Q. 3Q or 4Q, uh, right, uh, Al Khadar, do you believe that that could happen? Uh, some quarters do believe that American inflation is turning out to be stickier than was previously imagined and that it is taking longer to come down uh, than previously expected. If so, how do you think the Fed is going to move and uh, do you believe that interest rates have indeed peaked and we are likely to see cuts sometime soon? Uh, thank you for having me uh, in this uh, interview, of course. Agree with uh, Santos, uh, and um, from the same camp, it's like uh, the situation of the the U.S. economy is really good. All the data being released, they are fine and good, and not indicating towards any like weakness or a recession. If we go to the labor market doing well, if we even the inflation numbers, they are showing some progress towards the target, but. Uh, and there is with these good data, I think the Fed they have more room to keep their interest rate uh, at the high level for extended period a little bit, and that will pave the way for uh, um, I think Q3 uh, will be a good time to start cutting interest rate and uh, not more than uh, one, uh, two times the, uh, by, by the coming year to 2024. And there is another reason, there is a big gap also 
the U.S. economy and other economies, uh, developed economies. We are talking about uh, um, uh, the uh, another uh, uh, comfort zone for the Fed to uh, uh, to do their actions without any rush to cutting interest rates so quick because. The GDP numbers are doing fine. Their growth is doing well. Uh, maybe uh, uh, we saw some sticky inflation. Uh, uh, they they want the, their their interest rate to continue in the same direction. There is another uh, important point: uh, uh, the the labor market. The labor market do, doing well, even though the uh, uh, we saw some uh, uh, weakness in the uh, opening jobs, and uh, uh, and uh, uh, we saw also a few uh, negative data from the uh, ADP numbers. But in general, at the end of the week, we saw a very good uh, non-farm payroll report. So uh, it's what we want to say here, uh, there is no enough indicators uh, to push their decision into cutting interest rates or projections today. They might not be that big different than the September's one. Uh, and uh, uh, of course, they're going to keep interest rates on, in this meeting, all eyes on uh, projections. Uh, also, on uh, Jerome Powell talk, uh, if he's going to uh, uh, keep that hawkish tone or he, they, they are going to give uh, some sort of uh, um, drama to the market, mm -hmm. it will be very awkward. To be honest, if uh, there is any uh, soft uh, uh, talk by Jerome yes. Powell. Uh, this, uh, yes, uh, whether there's a toning down of that hawkishness or not uh, from the Fed chair remains an important piece. But also, Santosh Rao, when you look at uh, the crude oil prices trending down, how much of a factor is that going to be in this decision? Well, that's definitely helpful. Uh, it's uh, disinflationary. Uh, that uh, that helps a lot. So I think, but that that can change. It's all a supply-demand imbalance right now, a uh, little bit of geopolitical risk here and there. So I think there are a lot of factors play into that, but that can turn around. But that's definitely helpful. We want it to come down. Uh, that's more buying power for the consumer. Uh, see, we have to remember one thing. While we have all this, there are four lingering limiting factors in the economy. We have uh, the, the, the purchase, purchasing power of the consumer is slowly coming down. The savings that he's had, interest rates and inflation are still high. They're coming down, but still high. Things are not affordable. Uh, and so uh, I think that, like I said, the student loan uh, payments have started. So that's cutting into the purchasing power. The retail sales are good, but they're slowing down as well. So I think what's going to happen is there is some corrosion of the purchasing power that's going to start playing in 2024, slowly as we go into that, layoffs are, all the companies have guided down for next year, at least initially. Uh, I am in camp, our house call is that we'll have a soft landing, uh, we won't be crashed, we, we are in a rolling recession, so to speak, so we've all had the slowdown, so I think we're going to end there and then slowly start picking up in the 3Q, 4Q, like I said. So uh, there, there's some uh, inflationary uh, pressure out there. It's uh, definitely no no time to really drop your guard, and he's going to stay the course on that uh, on that end. Uh, I'm sorry, what was the original question? <laughs> I went kind of yes. I want side. to also understand the current rally in the markets uh, right now because of uh, one wonders whether this is because of expectations on uh, rate cuts uh, coming up next year, or is it because the economy is expanding at a rapid pace? Unemployment is low. Consumer spending, like you're both pointing out, is high. The Fed has been keeping those interest rates on hold. How far in that case are we from a pivot right now? Right, Dal Khadar, what do you think? Um, uh, honestly, it's like uh, the, the, the situation right now is, uh, uh, is far from to be changed. Uh, uh, and, and like investors in the market, they are trying to price in uh, a, a sooner actions, but uh, uh, as the Fed mentioned many times, uh, the 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 main point is the data. Data so far are not pointing to uh, 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 to a negative uh, 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 side of things where they the 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 decision makers in the Federal Reserve they need to rush and do this do uh, change. Uh, um, uh, I will add the point here. It's like uh, maybe the overall situation of the global economy uh, might be uh, under pressure, but not the U.S. Uh, of, with, with these positive data so far. Uh, the negativity that we are seeing is like a very light 
uh, compared with other parts of the uh, world. We are talking about China, China showing uh, more negative numbers, more bad data, let's say, uh, that they need to stimulate their economy uh, much faster. They might in Europe and UK uh, act faster in, in, in uh, uh, easing their policies. Uh, compared to the U.S., uh, where they can use that momentum uh, in their economy at the same time with the high interest rate, they might uh, reach to the uh, inflation rate uh, 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 and bring them to, towards the target. Yes. Of course, uh, there are several risks up ahead, a spurt in inflation, a recession that is by and large, that is only being talked about uh, right now. We haven't seen it come out to play because the economy has been that resilient. There could be several black swan events, uh, and all of which uh, still remain in play. That could overturn the apple cart, so to speak. We'll have to watch out for those. But for the moment, uh, it seems like a consensus view, at least from our guests, that uh, we're looking at a pause on any kind of interest rate cuts right now. And we're looking ahead at those uh, rate cuts uh, kicking in soon. And that's perhaps uh, a reason why. Markets have been buoyant. Uh, Sandosh Rao, Rayad Al Khadar, many thanks for joining us with your perspective on this edition of India Tonight. Pleasure having you with us. Thank you, Thank you so much. Meanwhile,